I cut the check, I cut the check, I cut the check Tell my niggas we up next, so we up next She shot a text, she shot a text, she shot a text Kill the p- I might put the bitch to rest Put a nigga on that same shit I've been ballin' with my niggas, Kevin Cambridge Oh, you drippy, but you better tuck your chain quick What's good, y'all, man? We back again with another episode of Between the Lines, and today we are here with the NBA Award Predictions episode, man. So before I get into this, I want to say, like always, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Um, thank y'all for all the love y'all been showing on the um, past few episodes. I think I'm at 87 subscribers now. I was just at 35 a month ago. So thank y'all. So first of all, we're starting off with the Rookie of the Years, and how I'm going to do this is um, the first person I name is going to be the third He's gonna be he's gonna be the third and the finalist, something like that. He's gonna be the third finalist and then the second and second finalist. And the last person I name in each category is gonna be the winner. So start off, starting off with rookie of the year. Um this one's kind of a uh, the one you probably, you probably won't even think about. I got Trey Murphy winning, um not winning. He's gonna be top three in Rookie of the Year uh candidate. Um I just love the way Trey Murphy plays, bro. It's a three and D wing, bro. You see how he's been playing in the preseason, you seen him in the um Summer League preseason, he's been averaging some wild numbers. 19 points, 43 from the field, 56 from three. Three and D wing, um, gonna be really big for this Pelican team. I think that was one of the best picks in the draft. He can literally play one through four for them, bro. And I won two through four for them. I think he started. He might start. Cause I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna start um Devontae. I think they're gonna start in the queue at the one. They start him at the two. If they want to go big, which I think they should go, have a lineup of Nikhil, De- um, Nikhil, Trey Murphy, Brandon Ingram, Zion, and then Valanciunas. That would be a really good lineup, really good defensive lineup too. And I just love, I love the defensive impact that he's gonna bring on this team. Like I say, he's already a light, lifestyle shooter. Fifty-six from from three. Even though it's only been three games, that's still wild. Averaging 19 points. I expect him to have a really decent year with this team, bro. That was a great pick for them. So, I got him at number two. Number three. Number two, got the number one pick in the draft, Cade Cunningham. Now, I put Cade right here because between him and the number one guy who you probably already know, I feel like that number one guy, is going. he has a chance to average better numbers because he is basically the number one option on that team. When you look at this team... Cade has Jeremy Grant in front of him, a solidified 3 and D wing who's kind of made his game to more, more than just 3 and D. Average 22 points last year in Jeremy Grant. And you got Sadiq Bey who can also have a huge bounce back year. He kind of reminds me of Trey Murphy. Like, they play literally alike. Um, you got Sadiq Bey, then Killian. They're still trying to get Killian feet wet. They still, to, that sounded weird. But they're still trying to get him in, implemented into the system. So, um... Just the players that, not he has a, in front of him, but the players that he, he has around him, they all players that needs the ball to be effective. So, I don't know if Cade's going to average the numbers that jumps off the page to be the rookie of the year right now this season compared to number one, who's Jalen Green. When you look at Jalen Green, bro, when you look at that Rockets team, there's really nobody in front of him. Yes, Christian Wood is that big player on the team, but... He's not going to be taking most of the shots. Kevin Porter Jr. is one of the players that might bounce. He might have a huge breakout season. But Jalen Green was the number two pick for the reason. He's starting at number. He's starting at the shooting guard position, and I expect him to get a lot of shots for this team. And he is going to be one of those players that's going to be on social media every night. That's that's basically how it is these days, bro. If you're on social media every night, that's how you pick up trash and, and that's how you win your awards, bro. And that's how you do your thing, bro. He's going to have a, a lot of highlight plays this season. A lot of big games this season, a lot of big scoring games this season. Out of all rookies in that's coming into the league this year, I expect him to be the first rookie to touch 40 points. Um, and he's going to be really exciting to watch, bro. So I really think he's going to win rookie of the year this season. Um, and I can't wait to watch this Rockets team, bro. Like I said, man, having Kevin Porter Jr. at the one, Jalen Green at the two, that backcourt is going to be ferocious. And then I hope they try it out, having Sengun play the four. He might be too slow. But having him play the four next to Christian Wood, I feel like that would just be fun. Then you got off the bench, you got Amarni Books, Josh Christopher, um, Kenyon Martin Jr., um, Daniel House. Like, it, this is going to be a fun Rockets team. And Jalen Green's kind of at the top of it, bro. So I really expect him to win rookie of the year this season. But I really love that Trey Murphy pick, bro. I I feel like he can come out of nowhere and just have a huge year, bro. He can have a huge year for this team, bro. So that's it for the rookie of the year one. Now next, I just going to take a break.
a drink. Now next is defensive player of the year. Like I said in the last one, I'm starting from the bottom going up. So number three, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Last year he averaged 1.2 blocks, 1.2 steals, and I expect him to just to do the same thing he did last year. One of the best help defenders of all time. And I don't know, they're going to be playing some really fun basketball this season, man. The NBA champions. Um, I want I, my question is, is he gonna? Are they gonna do like they did last season? Kind of like not try to go to be the best team in the league. Kind of just stay back. Like they won 43 games last season. Compared to the last two seasons before that when they won 60 games. I wonder how that's going to be, bro. I wonder if they're going to stay back, stay back. Not try to exag over-exaggerate themselves and not try to just go out there and go full throttle in the regular season. Which they should do. They shouldn't do that. I mean, they shouldn't go full throttle in the regular season. Because that's how you wear yourself out. And that's why they didn't do nothing in those past two playoffs. But at number three, got Giannis. Number two, Bam Adebayo. He averaged 1.2 blocks, 1.2 steals last season, one, one block last season. And he's one of the most versatile defenders we have in this league, man. And when you look at this Heat defense, I think he is the best defender on that team alongside Kyle Lowry, Jimmy Butler, P.J. Tucker. I think he is the leader as far as defense when you look at that team. So them being a very good defensive team themselves, they're going to have all the stats. And I feel like Ben Matabayo is going to be at the top of that list when you look at that team. And I think Bam, not just defense-wise, I think he's going to have a huge year. I think he might touch 20 points this year, as far as average 20 points. I think he might do that, bro. Bam is a really nice, versatile player, not just on defense, on offense, bro. He can do a lot of things. When I looked at his stats, I didn't even know he averaged five assists last season. He's one of the most versatile players we have in this league. And if he starts shooting that mid-range a little bit more, man, Jesus Christ. They're going to be really hard to stop. But number one, and it sucks. Because, like, when you look at a player like this, you can't even say, you can't even have voter, voters fatigue with this player. Number one, I got Rudy Gobert, bro. He's just too damn impactful on defense, bro. Average 2.7 blocks last season. One of the best big man defenders we've seen in a long time, bro. And it's hard not to put him at number one, bro. Because when you look at the other players, nobody averages the numbers that he averaged. I didn't even go into the advanced stats when you look at the stats like, how impactful he is when he's on the floor. How impactful the team is when he's on the floor. And how impactful they are when he's off the floor. It's probably skyrocketed up. Because he's just one of the most impactful defenders of all time. Isn't You don't even look at you don't even have to look at the blocks, bro. You watch the game, bro. Motherfuckers would be scared to go down there against Rudy. <laughs> and that's just, that's just his impact, bro. One of the best defenders of all time. So, I don't know. I expect him to get his fourth defense player of the year this year. And that's crazy. Because I think... The only person to do that was Ben Wallace. I think so. Hey, when you look at like when I to when, to me, I don't remember that those stats back in the day. But I'm pretty sure Ben Wallace does have four defensive players a year. But a player you might be thinking like, why is he not on here? Ben Simmons. I don't even know if Ben Simmons is gonna play. I know he's gonna play this season, but I don't know where the hell he's gonna play. I don't know when he's gonna play. Ben Simmons can't. He could play like game twenty. He can start in game twenty. Like that's a big chunk of games he's gonna miss. I don't know when he's gonna play, um, and I don't know where he's gonna play. So I'm like, yo, I'm not even gonna put him on this list. I know they just came out that news that um, him and Philly are trying to find a resolution. I I don't know if I should believe that. That just sounds really dumb that you go this whole off season trying to you put your house on lease. You don't. You moved out of Philly. And then you're going to go back. That don't even make sense to me. That's kind of like, damn, y'all gave up that quick. Like, at least do, at least do what um, Harden did. Just sit out until the motherfuckers trade you, bro. Just sit out, bro. They're going to trade you. You're Ben Simmons. But, yeah, I don't even know if he's going to play, bro. I don't know if he's going to play. So, didn't have him. But, um, next, coach of the year. Now, again, my number three is a controversial name, Nick Nurse. I have the Raptors. Being one of the sleeper teams in this league, bro. When you look at this team, bro, Fred Van Fleet, like the starting lineup, got Fred Van Fleet, um, Gary Trent, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, Kim Burst, and off the bench, you got Scotty Barnes, Malachi Flynn, um, Chris Boucher. This is a really nice young D team, bro. And when you look at the East, the East is stronger than it used to be, bro. But when you look at t a team like this, it's hard for me to put teams like the Knicks over this team. Over the team, or even teams like the Bulls. Yeah, the Bulls have the star power, but.
but this this Raptors team has been with each other for a long time, and Nick Nurse is one of the best coaches we have in this league, bro. And I would not be surprised if this team is fighting for a playoff spot. And I'm not just talking about like the eighth seed. I'm talking about like six, seven seed. I expect this Raptors team to be really, really good, bro. And yep, that's why I have number number three. Number two, um, Steve Nash. The Nets. This is gonna be too good. Too hard to stop. They're obviously gonna get their wins. They're a team that's deep from one through fifteen, and he doesn't really have to do that much coaching. I hate saying that about coaches, but he he doesn't, bro. When you have KD and Harden at the top, Kyrie for half of the games, I don't know. I really think they should trade him. That that's just so. I understand, bro. Like the whole vaccine thing is a personal thing, but like damn, bro. Like you you helping that you making that affect your team, bro. Now like they don't even know if they're gonna have you for home games. And when it comes to the playoffs, you can't play home games. Like what the hell? Like like I would trade them if I, I would trade him if I was them. But yeah, the Nets is just too good of a team to leave Steve Nash off this list. So got him finishing at number two. And at number one, I think this coach is about to come back and get the award that he once won. Steve Kerr. I have the Warriors being a top five seed in the West. And I think they're back, bro. I'm talking about like Contention wise, back. I think they're back. If you look at this Warriors team, bro, I really think they're back, bro. As far as like they have a lot of shooters around Steph, um, Clay's gonna come back, and I'm not expecting him to come back and be the all star Clay, but when you look at the highlights I've been seeing, and just knowing Clay himself, he's still gonna be one of the best shooters in the league. Um, Andrew Wiggins had a nice bounce back season last year for himself. Um, Jerry Green also had a nice bounce back season, was third in um, defense for the year voting. I just love this team that they have around Steph, and I think they're going to be back to winning more games. Like I said, I expect them to be a top five seed. So, I have Steve Kerr winning Coach of the Year, man. You might wonder why I didn't have other the uh, coach that just won it last year, Tom Thibodeau. I don't know, man. The East got a lot better. I'm expecting the Knicks to take a dip. Even though their team got better, I'm expecting them to take a dip. But, got Steve Kerr winning that award. Now, six man of the year. Two of these are controversial. Let me tell you why. My third one is Norman Powell. Now, to me, the reason why the Portland Trailblazers went to go get Larry Nance was to me, which I thought was to start him at the four. But during the preseason, he was coming off the bench, and they were starting Norman Powell at the three. That is just so dumb to me, bro. And I'm hoping that they make that change. That's why I got Norman Powell at, at the six-man position because I feel like him coming off the bench being the six-man is just – that's his game, bro. He needs to go come off the bench and score. Like, he's an effective off-ball shooter. Like, he that's what he's going to be playing with the um, Portland Trail Blazers. If he starts, he's going to be just sitting in the corner shooting three. He's effective doing that, but that's not him, bro. He's a lot more than that. So, if you play him on the, as a six-man, bro, that would just take the Portland Trail Blazers to the next level because then you're starting Robert Covington at the three. You're, tar you're starting Larry Nance at the four, which he should be starting in the first place. That's why y'all went to go get him. I just feel like that would take the Blazers to a next level. And then you got him off the bench, bro. I really think they should put Norman Powell off the bench. And him coming off the bench after last year just averaging 18.6 points, I think that would take the Portland Trail Blazers to the next level. But second player in the six-man of the year race, Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero. When I looked at his stats, it wasn't really an off year, but like, I guess um, I kind of got trapped in that bubble with Tyler Hero. The way he was playing, like he's playing like an all-star. I kind of got trapped into that, so it looked like an off year, but last year he averaged 15 points, 3 assists off the bench, which is really good numbers, and I expect him to average that this year. And the way he's been playing in the preseason, he's the leading scorer in the preseason. I really think he's going to have a huge year. And that team's going to be winning a lot more. And when you look at the team, bro, he is one of the consistent bucket gears on this team. So I expect him to have a huge year off the bench this season. And it's going to be fun for the Heat, bro. The Heat got a nice team. I'm not really too high on this team, but I can't lie. They are a nice team, but I'm not really that high on that team. I will would, I would still take the Milwaukee Bucks, the Nets. I'll fuck around take the Celtics. The Celtics are nice to me. But he do got a nice team. Now, number six, like I said, two of these are controversial. Jordan Poole. I don't know if he's starting or not. It makes sense to bring him off the bench and then start Avery Bradley at the two. It makes a lot of sense to me. But 
the way that motherfucker been playing, like you, you might have to start him, bro. You might. He's a bucket. He, he's a bucket. But they need like scoring off the bench. When you look at the bench, they just got shooters. They don't have a score, or they don't even have a, a facilitator off the bench. That's why I feel like he needs to come off the bench and be the spark plug for this team when Steph goes out. And that's something that he did all last year. But like y'all see him, y'all see him in the preseason, bro. I don't even got to talk about him that much. I already told y'all, bro. Jordan Poole is that guy, bro. If he was on any other young team, bro, it would be his team, bro. He is a bucket. A bucket. So, I got him winning six man of the year if they bring him off the bench, which they, which they should do. Because starting Avery Bradley at the two, it just makes sense. You need, you always need an elite defender next to Steph Curry. So, I will start Avery Bradley. Um, Two more awards. Most improved player. Now, if you would have asked me this a couple months ago, I would have said Darius Garland. But watching the preseason, bro, I haven't been liking what I've been seeing. Not only from him, but for the Cavs. Darius Garland, I was expecting to like go out there this preseason and just go get his buckets. It looked like they're playing him in the same role as they played him last year. He'll get a couple buckets, but most of the time he's playing off ball or he's just running a pick and roll. So I don't know if I can put him winning the most improved player to, um, this year, but... I do expect his numbers to go up, and I do expect him to improve as a, a better player, but I was expecting Darius to like come out there killing this preseason, and it, he wasn't really doing that that much. He shot more threes, which is something that I like, because that's something that we need, but like, damn, I want him to go out there and get his shot more, but I still expect him to be in the most improved player um, race, and I got him at three. Number two, now I know I just said John Moran's going to win it like last week, but I just can't. I can't put him over number one, so I got John Moran at two, bro. When you look at this team, bro, they're at a loss because they lost Valanciunas, and that was their best scorer last year. Even though John Moran averaged more points, which is something I did not even know. I really thought I thought Valanciunas was the leading scorer in this team, but he was the primary scorer of the team last year. But with him being gone, I expect John Moran to just jump up and average damn near 23, 24 points, bro. John Moran is that, is that type of guy that always steps up to the plate. Even though they had a loss, but when you look at this team and when you look at him as a leader, bro, I don't really know if I can say they're gonna take a step back, bro, because he is that type of player that's gonna take he's gonna take on all the problems and step up to the plate, bro. And I expect him to have a huge year. And hopefully they, they can make the playoffs again, bro, because he was kind of fun in the playoffs. Motherfucker averaged what, 20, 24, 25 in the playoffs. I expect him to do that again this year, bro. And I'm talking about in the regular season. So I got John Moran number two. Y'all probably already know. Well, I got a number one. Michael Porter Jr., bro. I can't put him on under Jai, bro. Um, I said Jai. Jai. I can't put him under Jai. Because when I look at this team, bro, and when I look at just him as a player, bro, he's getting more shots. He's one of the most consistent players we have in this league. I don't know if I can put him under Jai, bro. I think Michael Porter going to have a damn near all-star type year, bro. I think he's going to jump up to 24, 25 points, bro. Because he's going to have the ball a lot more. And him and Jokic already works perfectly together. Already work perfectly together. He's already one of the best shooters in the league. I expect him to jump up tremendously. And I still think the, the Nuggets, and I'm going to say this in a few minutes, the Nuggets are going to be a top five team in the, in the West. Bro. When you look at this team, bro, this team is fun. Even without Jamal Murray, this team is fun. And they're hard to beat. So, I got him winning the most improved player. And like I just said, I'm going to talk about this team again. And I'm talking about him right now. I have Jokic as number three in the MVP race. So, yep, we're hopping to the MVP um, standings. And I got Jokic at number three. Um, he averaged 26 points last year, 10 rebounds, 8 assists. And he's just that type of player that even with even with Jamal Murray being out, I think he's going to lead this team to a top five team. I'm top five seed. And he's one of the most consistent players we have in this league. Um... I don't know. It's it's a perfect team built around him. You got Aaron Gordon who's going to be cutting. Who's going to be a lob threat. You got Bones Island off the bench who's also going to be cutting. Also going to be scoring for him. Um, like I got to say, Mike Porter Jr., one of the best off ball players we have in this league. Monte Morris is a starting caliber point guard. He's just on the team with Jamal Murray in front of him, but he's a starting caliber point guard. But this is a team full of players that doesn't really need the ball to be effective. But when they get the motherfucking ball, they're going to be effective. And that's the type of players you need around Jokic, bro. And I feel like this team is just gonna be, this team gonna be really good, bro. Really hard to stop in the West, bro. Especially with him being the number one on this team, bro. The MVP from last year. I'm expecting him to have a really good year like he did this year. Um, number two, 
another player who had a really good year last year, Embiid. Now, I wanted to put players like KD and Giannis on this list, but I'm like, man, I don't know if I can do that no more, man. The way these two centers played last season, I got to put them on this list. Um, Embiid averaged 28 points, 10 rebounds, and it was something I, was, I loved to see last year, bro. It wasn't a lot of antics. It wasn't a lot of trolling. He was just dead serious the whole season, bro, and he dominated, bro. This is the first time I can say Joel B dominated, bro. And I love what I seen from from him from him last year, and I'm expecting him to do it again. Now it is kind of weird because you don't know what they're gonna do with this whole Ben Simmons situation, but I expect him to keep them afloat until they figure out a solution to that situation. Um, and yeah, I expect him to jump up to damn near 30 points this season, bro. Joel B had a dominant season last year, and if he didn't get hurt, I'm gonna keep saying this, he would have won MVP. But at number one. We have the hell is that on? At number one, we have Wardell Stephen Curry, the NBA's leading scorer of last season, averaged 32 points, five rebounds, five assists, and like I said, this team is completely built around him, and it's one of the best teams they had since KD left, and they are a really good team, and I expect him to just do what he did last season, dominate, bro. Dominate. He was literally unstoppable last season. 32 points, um, his career high in points. And like I said, I expect him to lead this team to the number number. I was about to say number one. Sometimes I be talking to them, but I expect him to lead this team to a top five seed in the league, bro. I mean, in the, um, in the West. And I think the Warriors are finally back. I think they're back. Even with, when James Wiseman and Clay come back, they're gonna take a couple games back to get to get to where they used to be. But I think the Warriors are back, bro. Draymond Green had a bounce back year last year. The Warriors had a bounce back year last year. And I, I think they're back, bro. I think this is a really good team built around Steph. A really, really good team. So, let me know if I, if there's any players that I missed for any award. Um, I think probably we're having two more videos come out this week. The Eastern Conference Preview and the Western Conference Preview. So, look out for those. But other than that, that's it for this video. I will talk to you guys later.